Well, good evening. Welcome to General Government, Canyon City, Colorado, on a gorgeous evening in Canyon City, Colorado. And welcome, I might, I get to vote him out, right? Welcome, it's good to see you. Um, now that Mr. Hamrick has decided to join us, would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Cochran, absent. Councilmember Gonzalez, absent. Councilmember Hamrick, just in time here. Councilmember Haquez, <laughs> absent. Councilmember Meisner, Councilmember Turner, absent. Mayor Pro Tem Smith, absent. Mayor Troutman, here. Okay, um, who is going to start with this presentation? I'll start saying something. Mr. Lancaster, would you go forward then? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So tonight we are here to, uh, for the, the bulk of the engineering departments here, um, as well as representatives from other departments to present to you what we've been working on for the past year and a half or so with our asset management and then our recent addition to that um, C-Click Fix, which is the interface uh, with the public as far as reporting issues and us responding back to those issues and then recording those back to our assets. So I just want to recognize the team first before we get started. So uh, Ted Dell here in the back, Mike Pilo, uh, Sam Crawford, here in the front we have Bob Hartsman, Glenda DeBecker, Tony Falgeen, Christy helped us out at the end there with the C-Click Fix and the website, and then we also had a, a few folks from IT that uh, participated as well in the implementation. Uh, I would say, Mike might argue with this, but the bulk of it was probably on Ted Dell's shoulders, and then Mike was for sure his viceroy that uh, uh, helped carry that project through. Uh, real difficult pr uh, for us. We had been using Cartograph, but we used, we went we moved to an on, online um, system. It was a complete redo of what we had been using for the past number of years for signs and streets, and then we've expanded it into many other assets the city uses. And so while we received some formalized training, there was a lot, and there still is a lot of um, learning curve left. And so um, I really can't emphasize enough what these folks have put into it as far as the hours and, and uh, strain and so forth. So with that, Glenda drew the short straw as far as presenting to you tonight. And then she has Tony and, and Bob who will assist in showing you guys a little bit of what this is all about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, we're going to go over just some real high points of what Cartograph OMS database and the C-Click Fix application are. Um, just a few slides up and then we're going to actually go into the applications and show you a little bit how we use them. Um, like Adam said, there's still a lot of tweaking going on and figuring things out. but um, and. Then we'll open it up for any questions or if you want to see anything uh, more on it. So Cartograph OMS and C-Click Fix are both databases. Um, the C-Click Fix is a phone and computer app that can be uploaded and used by the public and by us. And um, it is strictly a request database and we'll get more into that. The Cartograph OMS database allows us to track our assets, our work on the assets, um, labor, maintenance, costs, inventory, um, some other assets or, or things uh, like with stormwater with my illicit discharges and investigations and things like that. I can track those. And um, we also can track requests made by citizens and assign tasks to those requests um, and cross-reference them with assets uh, if needed. So um, NC Click Fix integrates with OMS, which we'll get into in a little bit. So the main purposes for using this is better customer service so we can track requests, we can talk back and forth amongst different departments if needed, um, more transparency for the public and for us, uh, better coordination between the departments, and more accurate accounting of the resources and labor and equipment. 
Currently, um, those departments using both OMS and C Click Fix are the Public Works Water Distribution and Streets Departments, Engineering Stormwater, and the Engineering Specialist and City Inspector. Um, Code Enforcement and Parks Department only use C Click Fix. So they're not integrated into OMS as of yet. So the OMS capabilities, uh, I kind of touched on this, but our asset management, so we're talking about actual, uh, for stormwater, it would be our stormwater inlets, outfalls, detention basins, pipes, streets, um, streets and culverts, um, all of the assets that Bob has with water distribution, like hydrants and meters and meter pits, and et cetera. So, we can track information on those, uh, sizes, shapes, any custom information that we need to have on each of those. We can map the locations of those that are installed around the city. And we can keep, uh, if we have an inventory of something, we have an inventory ability so we know what we have on hand when we have to order costs and that kind of thing. We can um, assign tasks such as cleaning or repair or replace um, on the different assets and we can keep track then on the status of those. We can see what's been cleaned, what's been replaced, what's been repaired. Um, and it helps increase the accuracy of costs through the labor and equipment because we actually put in, uh, assign it to a person, put their time and what equipment was used against that so we can get a fuller accounting of what that asset costs. And we also have iPads for field personnel. So um, the idea behind that, they can be out in the field. They can pull up a limited OMS, not the full thing, but they can do inspections and fill out forms and things like that, track data and their time on iPads while they're out in the field. Our, uh, the OMS also allows us to manage requests from the public. We can track the calls uh, with the caller information, identification, location of issues. We can assign tasks to those. Um, if it is on an actual asset, we can cross-reference and assign that task to the asset, but it cross-references to the request. That allows us to track like I got a request and it ends up being a storm inlet that needs cleaned, I can assign that to streets department who does that cleaning. They can put in their labor and time and, tell me, and I can see when that's finished and if I need to get back to the requester and let them know that that was done. So um, again, increased accuracy of costs with requests. So and um, we can see, you know, how long it takes to complete something or, or what percentage of requests we get completed if there's actual work that um, is involved with those. We can do all types of reporting. Um, the tasks and costs associated with the assets or requests. You can put things in work orders, so you can group similar types of tasks or, or that into a work order and get a, a full accounting um, of the costs and the types of tasks. You can do request reporting, so number of requests, the issues by department. And we can do custom reports, um, inspection reports, form letters, um, I will say the, the reporting takes a little bit of working through, um, but we've, we're getting a handle on it. I've got it quite a bit done. So um, we, could, we are able to pull out pretty much any kind of information you want. It might take a little bit as we're learning still, but we can get rep, um, different types of reports done. So the C Click Fix, like I said, is a computer and phone application the public and uh, employees can load it to their phone, their desktop. The public um, can actually take a picture of a problem that they see, put a point on a map and type in a little bit, assign it to a department and then it goes to that department. 
as a request and shows up, um, then we can assign tasks or, or go take care of that request. If we need to call the person, we need to go investigate, we need to go clean something. We can also use it internally. Code enforcement does that. They're using this as their da database now for all their calls, and it allows them to put messages and notes internally that the public won't see, um, and so they can communicate between the code enforcement officers. So if more than one is working on a problem that was called in or noticed, they're able to do that if they aren't able to meet face-to-face -face on things. Um, there are specific categories of issues, um, so that will allow for assignment to specific departments. Um, the notification of the request then is sent to that contact for each department. The status can be tracked, um, and as status change, if you're subscribed to C Click Fix, which is a free application, um, it'll send updates and notices if there were comments put in or the status has changed or a task has been assigned to it, it will send that back to that person who put in the request so they can see that. And it, um, there are also public comments and, and internal comments, so the public will only see public. Those of us that work uh, internally can see all of the comments. And like I said, it, you can upload photos. So um, it does integrate with those of us that use the OMS database. So if something was assigned to streets through C Click Fix, it will also show up in the OMS database as a request. And um, from the OMS database, then those tasks can be assigned and tracked and labor and equipment can be tracked on those. It does uh, allow some reporting um, by issue or department. Uh, you can specify a time frame. It'll allow comparisons between like a year or a month. Um, you can specify that. And you can get reports on how many days to acknowledge, days to close, and how, what the status is of all the requests. It does not allow for tasks to be assigned per se, like the OMS does, um, and there's no cost tracking with it. But since it sorry, integrates with OMS, we can do that through the OMS. So we're going to go ahead and switch. I'm going to have Bob log in. Uh, sorry. Bob is logged in, I'm gonna turn it over to him. He's gonna show you some of the assets and maybe some reporting that can be done with the OMS. In, in the meantime, I, I would recommend that staff understand that those notes that they're sending to each other are subject to open records requests. And sometimes those notes, we as employees feel like uh, we don't have to be as discreet as necessary, but they wind up being real embarrassing sometimes in terms of some of the stuff that gets shared between employees when an open records request comes about. I will say that um, I have been watching the C Click Fix. I've worked with code enforcement on some things. We've communicated back and forth. To date, I, I will just say to date, Things have been kept pretty professional, it seems to me, but I do understand that, and I'm sure code enforcement does, but it doesn't hurt for us to remember that. Right. Well, thank you, Glenda. Um, good evening, Mayor, Council members, staff. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a pretty uh, comprehensive uh, software program, which I'm uh, growing to like more and more each day. Uh, one of the areas of it is it, it tracks all of our assets, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> right now I have uh, the assets turned on, which are water hydrants, uh, fire hydrants, our water meters and valves, and those are depicted on the screen to the right there. Uh, the yellow are our water meters, 
And you can see in the left-hand navigation pane that uh, uh, we have 8,815 uh, water meters um, in the system. Bob, is that, is that current? I mean, that's yep. how you would see it? That's not just for us? Right. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yep, that's how we see it. Uh, have uh, 1,180 fire hydrants in the system. Here's the one that's down on the west end of Tunnel Drive. Um, water valves. Went the wrong way. Here we have... Uh, Two water valves depicted, one's for the fire hydrant and then one's for the inline on the water main. I don't have the water mains highlighted. Uh, that's still a work in progress. Uh, when the, uh, we merge the data for water mains from Adam's uh, uh, water model program into this, they uh, were not aligned right. So one of my staff members works every day to, uh, he's working on aligning those water mains to the water valves, which have been uh, GPSed, and so that'll give us uh, accurate location of where those water mains are. What's the 1483 stand for? M feet, miles? They're uh, water, all water mains, I guess that would be. I'm sorry, were you looking at Mayor? up there on their le left hand side with the check mark that says all water? Yeah, all water hydrants. No, go keep going down. Next one. All ne water there. meters. Next one down. There. Well, there where it says all water something, mines. Water, mains. Mains. What? mains, all water all, mains. Yeah, all water mains. And what does the 14 something mean? Uh, there's 1,483 segments of water main. Oh. Um, for example, there's one coming into view right now. And here's a, uh, if you click on it, then it should be able to view some data, which we're still in the process of uh, going through and gathering all of the, uh, the data, uh, as far as the attributes, what size, what kind of uh, water main it is, uh, information like that. So each, uh, this is the uh, segment number of this one is uh, 1221, and it's just this length uh, here. I just didn't mean to get you off track. No, that's all right. So good questions. And so uh, the, the asset part of this is really nice. Uh, another thing that it does is, again, when we uh, create the tasks to repair, replace, inspect, um, that will start calculating a uh, operational condition index. Is that correct? Operational condition index of the asset. So uh, the more work you do to it, to um, sometimes bring it back up to standard will will increase that OCI so that it has a longer uh, service life. Uh, obviously with some others like water mains when you start seeing a lot of repairs on it and stuff like that, it's gonna start taking it the other way, degrading it. And so therefore, uh, you know, once it reaches a certain index level, then it's time to look at replacing that asset. Mm. So it provides you with a lot of information which is really great. Um, so to kind of give you a couple examples how we've used it in the water department so far, and bear with me, there's still a lot I'm learning here. Uh, this one here is the leak that we had uh, up on uh, 10th and Oak. And uh, it was on this segment of water main. It was in the intersection right here. And uh, we can go to the details, which uh, it was uh, kind of just gives you some basic information there. Uh, it allows us to enter our labor rates as far as uh, everybody who touched the project and um, the, uh, uh, the hours and stuff that they put in on it. Um, we track our uh, equipment that we use that was out on site that day, uh, the backhoes, the, uh, this looks like stuff from Tony's crew for the patch repair that was done. Um, and um, then of course uh, materials um, is also tracked. And the nice part about this is it's uh, once we have our inventory complete, um, then we will, uh, 
be able to keep better track of when we need to order stuff. So again, this was the water leak up on 10th and Oak that we had. Um, let's see here. How can I? Can I get back to tasks, Mike? Just yeah, on the work order. Tasks. Right there. Okay. Yeah. That's not what I, I want. I guess you just yeah. There you go. Okay, so. Um, yeah, what we were kind of going through was the AC, the, the patching that Tony's crew did. Here's the actual data from the water distribution department. And uh, again, just for the leak repair itself uh, was $8,348 as far as uh, uh, time, labor, and equipment to repair the water main. And then, um, let's see if I go back. We should be able to get to Tony's, uh, and, and again, we could share this information with, with the street department, and then Tony inputs his crew's work, which the patch repair cost $15,182. And again, we can get information on uh, all of his, uh, uh, his staff's time and work on it. So combined with the uh, uh, leak repair plus the patch repair, uh, not including the uh, street damage restoration fee, uh, that leak cost, nor the amount of water that we lost, uh, $23,531. So very, very helpful information. And of course, I'm hoping, you know, if, Next year, when we look back on this, uh, it's going to provide us with a lot of uh, useful data and let us know where we're spending our money at. Um, one other, because I don't want to hog all the time, but um, let's see here. I'm going to work again. We also used this program earlier this year. Uh, let's see here be the best way to find that. Uh, I'm looking for number 29 right here. Uh, we use this this year to conduct our hydrant uh, exercise program. And what that entailed is uh, we sent our crews out. And as you can see, there's 1,180 fire hydrants on the system. And we opened each one of those and float it. And while we're doing that, we take uh, uh, information off that. Uh, let's see here if I can find. I think any one of these will do. So while they're out there on site, the crew's using his iPad, their iPad to uh, enter um, information. Uh, to flush this one hydrant up here on Twin Flower off of 9th Street cost us $36, which amounted to uh, uh, the labor costs, the equipment cost, and the, uh, any materials we used to, uh, while we're there, we'll grease and lube the, uh, the operating stem. Um, we get the uh, basic information on it. Uh, let's see here. How do I get to uh, my inter inspection report, Mike? Like I say, I'm still learning this. Um, upper right. Upper right. View inspection. Oh, help me out. There it is. So they give it a, a rating, the hydrant a rating as far as its operation, how well it drains, if it needs painted or not, the clear space around it. And then we collect our flow data and how long it took to uh, flow this hydrant and to get things to clear up, um, record the static pressure, the residual pressure, and then uh, looks like this calculated that uh, we flowed uh, about 23,880 gallons during this time period of exercising that fire hydrant. So um, let's see here, when I go to the uh, 
I'm gonna go back. I want. Uh... So this year, uh, to flow those 1,180 fire hydrants. It cost us right at $38,838 as far as uh, labor and equipment and supplies. You do it every year? Every year, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, we do that for two reasons. First reason is um, we want to make sure that that hydrant is at least uh, open once during, a, during the year so we know that it works. So in times of an emergency when the fire departments rely upon it, and then secondly, to help uh, flush the system out, um, uh, dead end lines, which each fire hydrant lateral is, uh, water does nothing but stagnate in that and water quality goes down. So we like to flush all that water out of there after the low flow season in the winter. So the, I have a question. So <clears throat> labor equipment material for all those hydrants, the, what were what were the material costs? So that was basically like gr grease, grease and grease. The uh, where do you account for the water that uh, is flushed through there? I do. Uh, Mike was uh, just talking to him about this earlier. Um, uh, I calculate the uh, uh, basically just using that uh, uh, flow uh, rate and time. Uh, for example, last year uh, we consumed about 5.3 million gallons. In flushing. During the season, mm -hmm. and so, but so, where, excuse me, where where would that be accounted for in this? Well, I don't think it's accounted for just yet. Like, well, in the one inspection report, you saw that the the twenty three thousand eight hundred eighty right. gallons that that hydrant flowed, mm -hmm. and so Mike is working on a report for me that I could take that data, manipulate it, get it into a spreadsheet, and then calculate the amount of water. Because because there is actual a, a cost of treatment for that water. Oh yeah. When, and when we get the volume of water that we use, and Bob can assign a value, whatever that dollar amount is per gallon, we can come in and add it as a material. Mm -hmm. And then we can just say we use that in this work order, and it would cover the five million gallons of water, whatever the value is, would add. So it would add to that total cost, and it, it would capture all that. Thank you. We just need to put it in there. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of this, like say, we're, we're, we're still learning, and. Uh, uh, we'll get there, but it's just going to take some time. So that's, I just want to show you a couple examples of how the water department's using it. So I think, uh, Tony, yep. you're going to solve. Good evening. Mine's going to focus more on uh, some of the work orders that I've been doing. And I've came in and I've built several different work orders uh, just to explain them a little bit. Uh, our mag chloride program. I built this one. It takes into account and I can open it if you care to see it. But it, all the water we use for grading the roads all the time, the equipment, the material from the vendor. And that way, if I'm asked, uh, how much did your mag chloride program cost you in 2019? <laughs> I've got my total right there. That's what it cost us to apply that on about five miles of road approximately. Another one that's kind of a hot spot for everybody is uh, our street sweeping. I uh, put a map together with the help of uh, Mike and Ted a couple years ago. 
and we divided the town up into approximately eight to nine different zones and we assigned a color to each zone. And we done, the goal was to try to get all the streets in the city that are curb and guttered swept at least one time a month. And the nice thing about this is, uh, and I'm gonna pick on one that I know very, very well. I'm gonna pick on the orange section just because I know that one off of the top of my head. This is what we've spent on sweeping just the orange section of town this year is the 25,000. And what I like about this is uh, Main Street between 1st and uh, 16th is under the orange color. So if somebody, Ryan or whoever took a call, Christy, and they said that the street sweeper hasn't been on Main Street for over a month. I can come back in here, or they can, they can look it up. We can come down here in this task history. And let's see. And here it is, I can give you the dates that Main Street was swept from 1st to 15th or 16th. It was done 11-5. And I usually put in here, if it's a large quantity of sand, this was right after the snowstorm we had. A lot of these are uh, loads of leaves. So that's, again, that's just this section of orange. Now, if you wanted to know what our total street sweeping costs are for the year, all of our different zones, there's our dollar amount right there. That's what we've spent for street sweeping this year. And I really enjoy the program. I'm just like Bob, I'm learning it, but it's been a very, very helpful tool. I've went in and created a work order for special event requests. That has to do with if we have to block off a street for a parade or something like that. If administration comes and says, well, how much do you guys spend per year on this stuff? Now it's at our fingertips. Excellent, excellent program. Uh, how do you get to a um, equipment unit cost? Then we're all programmed in by Mike and Ted and what we're using is the actual costs of FEMA. So, let's see, let's just go back up to. So that, that's, that's out of a table then, is that correct? A FEMA table? FEMA table. Correct. It's just, just like the old means for, you know, uh, for estimating cost, cost for construction. Right, like a prevailing rate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it may not, it may not, if our equipment is older, it may not actually represent our true cost then since it's out of a table, right? Well, what I did was it's been quite a few years ago when we had all the flooding. Adam and I worked real closely. The gentleman's name was Bob Nash with FEMA and he set up an office here in City Hall and he was here for, I would guess, a month. And we was tracking, you know, like a backhoe, a loader, a dump truck. And he told us no. And he gave us the actual FEMA spreadsheet and he said, you assign the dollar value and it's based on like a five yard truck, which would be a bobtail, 12 yard for a tandem, a grader, it would be a 12 foot mold board. It's all based backhoe loader, it's based on bucket size. So that's what we've been using ever since that little exercise. And this would have been awfully handy at that time because everything we did then was on paper. So it was quite an ordeal and quite an eye-opening working with them, but we did get through it and fairly interesting. The, the FEMA rate is supposed to capture the fuel, tires, maintenance across? Complete cost and amortization. Yeah, the cost of the Correct. <coughs> and then if there was ever a need to go back, like if there was ever some other kind of flood event, we'd have to go back instead of trying to pull everything back in and convert it, we would already, we would already have it. At this point, we're not tracking fuel and maintenance costs 
in this program for our equipment, even though the finance department is. Now on the street sweeping, we have, they have built in the cost of the water. And every time that street sweeper fills up, I have the gallons when that stuff's entered. That's what your uh, material cost is on this, is the gallons of water. So if there's any other questions, I can try to answer them. If not, I'll pass it over to Christy. Actually, or. I wanted to do, show the C-Click Fix live real quick. Yep. Did you have any questions for Tony before I do that? No, go ahead. Yeah, I do. It's kind of back to Ted, maybe. You had mentioned that the FEMA figure included depreciation and fuel costs, but then I also heard that accounting's also doing something with fuel. Yeah, so, I don't want to say this. This is a, this wouldn't be the definitive cost. We're using the FEMA cost for the materials. We are actually using the labor rates for the, the, the uh, employees that we get from finance, so that it accounts for their benefits, okay. all their vacation time, all that. But we, finance isn't using Cartograph for their accounting. Okay. They're still tracking fuel, how fuel and whatever. Right. Okay. Up there, however they do that. We don't have those figures, but that's that's why we're using the FEMA rates because this program is robust enough that if fleets and building maintenance and parks wanted to use this program in the same manner, they could do that, and then you could tie those things fully together. You can have all as much detail as you want. Okay. So right now we're just using the best information available. Right. All right. Um, I see Kelly's made it here, so our code enforcement officer. Should you have my chair? Mm -hmm. Use quick on that <laughs> So this is the um, actual website for the C-Click Fix. Uh, you can see there's just a list of requests um, here. Uh, either put in by code enforcement. Um, Denise puts them in. If they come into City Hall, she can put them in. Um, <clears throat> or any employee that is using C-Click Fix, if we see something or take a call, we can add, put it in to C-Click Fix. Um, you can sort, um, so say <clears throat> code enforcement. And so you can see everything that code enforcement has done. Do you have one that you'd like to show them? Um. Sure, we can go to this one that um, I actually put in today. I don't know what that's doing there. Okay, here we go. So this is at uh, 312 North Orchard. This came in as a phone call, an anonymous phone caller um, called and said the weeds have been overgrown all summer. This is actually um, an abandoned house and I was able to contact a manager of a property uh, management through Safeguard Properties and um, this contact person, they have somebody who comes in and takes care of any of their properties that are um, uh, in the city. And um, they are the contact people to get a hold of and then they contract that out to somebody. So um, they, she said that they will, they were looking at this property earlier when we had the snowstorm. And so they were kind of delayed a week or so of uh, getting that all mowed down. Um, this was actually a house that um, had a meth lab in it and it blew out the back door. So this company took over the property and 
uh, kind of closed it all out and everything, and then their their managers are supposed to come in and, and take care of that property. So um, we can get in there and see what has been done with that property. We can communicate with each other um, as soon as it comes in and we open it. Then we put our comment in when it was open. We acknowledge that it came in and we contact the uh, person that called it in and uh, said that we recognize uh, the report and thanks for the report and we'll address this matter. And then since there's so many of us, we were trying to track on how, um, which officer was taking care of um, each project. So we just initial whenever we put anything in. So sometimes, you know, there's three of us that takes care of the same project um, throughout the project. So um, they said this, is, this should be taken care of by the end of the week. And then we can read this and come back uh, Monday morning and go out to the property and see if it's been done. And this is how we, we track them all. So that so, goes, I don't want to, that go goes out to the, the person that sent it in, even though it was anonymous? Um, yeah, anonymous person can get on the site and see that it has been acknowledged and that we will be taking care of it. Okay, if it wasn't anonymous, would that be sent out to the person? No. So they, they have to. Right, they'd have to get back on the get site. Back on, to Actually, if you sign in, if you actually load up the app and you create an account, like I, I created one personally, mm -hmm. and if I sent in a request from that account I created, um, and any public comments that were then posted, whether it was a task assigned to it or, or a comment that maybe Kelly had put in there, if it was public, it would actually email me back and say a comment has been added to this. And you can log back in and look at the comment. So that person that did it, if they were curious enough, can go back on the site and see what you just commented. Correct. On. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Meiser. So if you log on to the C Click Fix link off of the website, then it looks like all you've got the ability to do is submit a problem, not review a problem. Is that correct? No. If you click on those, like if you find one and you click Is that what all the dots are? Mm -hmm. so uh -huh. All those dots are the different areas in town on the map where there's a... Okay, I see. Easy. Good. Right. And you should be able to go to the top here and uh, do any of the requests. You can click on any of the requests and that'll bring everything up. So, and if you change this just to everything on the way, go ahead and click on the map. On the map. Gotcha. So you can see areas and then as you zoom in, if you zoom into an area, it'll separate out into separate calls and you can actually click on that and see what I can kind of find a call here. <laughs> Since the dots are different colors, does that mean yeah, what, anything what, or just different what does colors? That mean? Yes, so the different, co so different is, colors represent whether it, it's just been reported, it's been acknowledged, it's in progress, and it's been closed. Oh, okay. Ah, here's one for Tony. Street light lens is unhooked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do street lights. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, do you have any further questions? Want to see anything uh, more detailed? The, the only thing, not, just to clear it in my mind, the C click is the, where the public can get on and look at everything. The cartograph whatever that's called, it's just for inter within our government. Correct. They can't get on that. No, that's, uh, it's completely uh, internal. In this day of being hacked and everything, which I have, is it relatively protected? I mean, not, can the, someone get in and fiddle with it or? So the, the cartograph is hosted through Amazon's web services and we are, we don't host it. 
So okay. Have, between Cartograph and Amazon, they have all their, it's beyond me, so it's all the, all the security and that, that's their responsible, that's what we're paying them for. And if, is this a, a monthly, a yearly charge for this cloud, it's a cloud thing, sort of computing thing, and uh, do you have an idea what that is, or does it vary, or what the yearly cost may be? A year. Okay. Um, do you, uh, may sound like a dumb question. Um, so you see this as usable to help reduce costs or make it more um, expedient to get things done quicker, to keep account of the, the assets. Uh, I guess the point is, and maybe it's just an interesting point, is that do you uh, do you see a thirty-eight thousand dollar return of taxpayers' money because of the ability of these two programs? Absolutely, we're going to see a huge time savings um, just for staff in in how we process work now. It's just the workflow itself, so there'll be a huge savings there. Um, there'll also be a big savings. You know, we started a discussion about a year or so ago about reappropriations from stormwater or from general fund to stormwater, or vice versa. And, so, and some of that was best guesswork. And so this takes a lot of that guesswork out. So we, every time we can fine tune that to more accurate numbers, then we're looking at the cost savings. It's also, uh, hopefully we will reveal, reveal things as well. So if we see, okay, does city council realize we're spending this much time and effort on a particular thing? Is that, is that where we want our priorities? How do we want to shift those priorities? So again, it's, it's just being able to give us a better picture of what's actually happening and then then the transparency is the huge part of it. The, the public now can see exactly, instead of, well, we're spending this much we think on this, you know, we can show them exactly what we're doing. They're getting less of a runaround, especially with the C click fix process. You know, as Tony mentioned, streetlights isn't my thing. Well, the, the difference is now, instead they would call in, they would be directed to somebody else, somebody else would have to write it on a piece of paper or email somebody. And now with just a click, it could be reassigned to the people who are responsible for it. And then the C click fix user can see that. They can see all that that's happening. Oh, okay, I called this person, but they've reassigned it to these people, so now I know who's responsible for it. And if it doesn't get done, who I can call and bug again. So hopefully it'll keep them from calling a city council member or the mayor. <laughs> right, well, and again, back to transparency. You guys will be able to see that as well. I know. I'm just yeah. kidding. But the code enforcement, will you have yes. an iPad that you can put those in? Is that something, because I know other departments have that. Uh, right now we have the MDT in the animal right. control truck. So um, we can do that immediately right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Meister. So back to the street light issue. It looks to me like at 317 North 16th, and I can't, I don't know how you determine, but it says street light lens cover unhooked and hanging down. It shows at least the dot on the map almost up by Franklin. So it's not a street problem. How do we know who's fixing this? So it gets assigned to somebody, and so whoever that, whoever that it gets assigned to, then we'll evaluate, because they have to pick something. They have to pick some category. So to get and even so, even if they pick the wrong category, they be on. They pick a street light and they assign it to stormwater. The stormwater person will get in and say, "This is not me." They'll reassign it to the people they think it's responsible for, and then and then that will get reassigned. So if it's a tree limb, it's likely that's parks. If it's a street light that's out, it may be Black Hills. So then it'll get transferred to me, and I'll send Black Hills a note saying your street lights out on 16th and Franklin. So I went ahead and pulled up what you would see if you were logged in and want to do a new request. You can click on the map or type in an address for right. it. Um, you can add an image. Is that, are you live right there? Yes, I am. But this is, she's logged in as as an ed, as an employee, yeah, right. As a citizen. right. So right. Um, they can put in their email, their phone number, or submit it anonymous, anonymously. And that's the one of the helpful things for our call our call takers at the at the reception at any individual department. You know, before again, they they were having to make the decision on their own. 
and especially if they were inexperienced or filling in for somebody, they didn't know who it goes to. And so sometimes it would be days before the right person got the message. Now it's instantaneous because they'll go in here like a user, enter the information again, even if they put it to the wrong department, that gets, that gets circulated fairly quickly and then back to who it needs to, to be. I missed the department thing. I'm sorry. So when I'm in putting this, I'm selecting an okay, area? Okay, yeah, I'm in as a, an, an employee rather than right. an actual user. So you would, when you're, when a actual user is seeing it, you would pick a, par a department, whether it was city okay. parks or stormwater or code enforcement, and put in just, the, the, the issue and then it would be assigned to that and it like for stormwater then i get an email saying a new a new request has been entered for stormwater and see click fix i go in i see what the issue is then i move forward from there what you'll see on there is a general list of issues like i don't know tree limbs or something like that and if hanging what, light cover that's what it is you can pick that just and behind the scenes we've already <laughs> If it's tree limbs, it's already going to automatically going to sign it to parks. Parks will get notified that somebody in the community has said there's a tree limb down. They'll go look at it and take care of it or figure out that it's a, no, it's not a city tree or whatever and respond to it. And that's something we can adjust in the future. So it, we took our best guesses as where those assign, assignments will go and based on what the general public would you, so a lot of that's happening behind the scenes. So you're not, you as a user are not picking Adam, the engineering department. You're just saying, this is, this is a streetlight problem. And then behind the scenes, we've already assigned streetlight problem to Adam. So I just caution everybody. I mean, do you have a check in the system so that, I don't know, the end of the month, somebody sits down and looks at all these calls and make for sure there's nothing just lagging there? So that's a work because in progress. I'm just telling yes. you. Yes. At some point in time, somebody's going to look at this light and say, "That's been there for 15 days. You can't stop there and check it." Right. And so that's exactly that's exactly kind of the double-edged sword of this transparency right. and stuff. <clears throat> and, and and we've all talked about that as a team, and we understand that that is likely going to happen, and it's part of it. But that's a good thing because that that makes us better. And then again, it's transparent to the public on how we're performing. So. We know that it's going to be a while before this is, okay. you know, before we're operating at 100 percent. But you're absolutely right. Um, you know, and, and that's that's the part from council, too, is you guys can ask for a report from Ryan and say, hey, how are we doing on our response times? He can get a report from us and it might show that we're not doing very good or maybe code enforcement is doing awesome and engineering departments doing terrible. And then and then you can say hey, what's going on. And then that's kind of the process. So, so for the last several months, we've been using this kind of as a, a soft launch. We've been using it internally, trying to work out a lot of those bugs and kinks. And, uh, you know, with the new website, this is, this is the public launch. And um, so we're, we're going to keep an eye on those to make sure that, you know, we're, we're continually uh, looking into uh, making sure those issues are resolved. Yeah, the, the, this, because C-Click uh, Fix is a, a, a public interface out there, um, when we when we went live with our software company, even though we hadn't announced it, people could still stumble upon it and find it on. You know, especially if they were a C Click Fix user in a different um, community before they came here. And so the, we we when we first launched, we discovered things that were in there that we didn't even that people had already entered that we didn't do even as a test. So there, there's some things out there still we have to clean up and take care of. As far as that's concerned, so if you if you were to look at the map today, you're going to find some of those that have been sitting out there for a while. This is how it will look now, Christy. On where would I click to get to C click? Yeah, so we just have, scroll down. So we have the new website that just went live on Friday, and here on the bottom of the page is report an issue. No. So Duh. if you click on report. <laughs> an issue, it will take you to the C-Click Fix page. And it gives some information, that way residents know what C-Click Fix is, how they can use it, what they can report, that it's for non-emergency. Um, and then so here at the bottom of the page is the map, so it does show that. And so when people want to submit, they'll do a new request. 
um, and then they'll they can either do it from here um, I did put the links on for if they have um, they're using their smartphone they can use the app there and download it um, or they can go directly to the um, C click fix and this is what it looks like through the C click fix site our Canyon City one right here um, and so you can you request and you can say fifth and main Canyon City confirm the location so and then you this is where you choose okay uh, uh, there is a we have a street light problem <laughs> right um, and so whatever it is <laughs> street light we'll do graffiti um, and then you can add an image um, and I get reports like this on social media so Facebook I'll get a private message and someone will say hey there is um, trash at this location or my you know my neighbor's doing this can I send you some photos and so the nice thing is um, now that we have this um, I think about maybe two days ago someone said hey do I need to come to City Hall or can I just like send you some photos of an address of a, of a you know my neighbor has this issue and I I want to report it and I was able to say here there's you know you can use C-Click Fix here it's on our website here's the direct link and so they were able to do that themselves um, so I think this will be really helpful um, and a lot of times it's very nice that residents can create that um, account if they want so they can get those notifications but it's nice that they can also just go back in and see and read the comments if they want to be anonymous because I know sometimes people get a little nervous about like well my name is going to be out there someone's yeah. going to find out it's me that reported it and so they still can track that information whether they sign up or not. So I've got a couple of questions. The um, what other so we have our water distribution system um, in the process of being um, put into our uh, in, into the uh, the the operating system, the cartograph. What other systems are we going to put in there? So so I th let me let me ask sharpen the question a little bit. So s some of the things as a city that we're, that we're interested in that don't necessarily belong to us, for instance, are the cable, um, you know, the people who have franchises with the city for use of city right-of-ways uh, that have power poles or um, poles where power and cable is hung on. Um, is there, is, are there any plans to include information like that in the? Not third-party assets at this time, no. Not third-party assets at this time. Okay. I would say we have, so we have our street assets, stormwater assets, signs, street signs, street lighting to some extent. Street lights. The bulk of our water system distribution stuff. Uh, we can add bridges. Can we add bridges? So those are, those are the ones we have now mm -hmm. that are actively being used. And of course, the sky's the limit on what we can and Adam, with, uh, with the exception of the streetlights downtown, we own the streetlights downtown, but all the other streetlights are Black Hills. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But we do have we do have some third party mapping, so to speak. Some and, and streetlighting is one for example. But like gas mains, no. So uh, the if you could import maps from third party vendors, they would that be would that be useful to have in this system or just clutter? It would be, but it would be for different purposes. It wouldn't be for us to track costs and right. those sorts of things. But um, you know, we can share we can share some of those mapping capabilities right now in our art art products, Esri products. Um, for example, the sewer manholes and so forth um, with the sewer district. And we do we do some of that back and forth with projects. I'm, th I'm thinking of, uh, you know, law enforcement and, and the fire department, uh, you know, and maybe knowing where gas mains are or a buried electrical or something like that. And so uh, that's kind of where I'm headed with this is, you know, those, those kinds of thoughts. 
so would this be an old complaint here of, of 200 Centner Court? Is that the, am I saying that right, Centner Court? A, a water pressure complaint that's three months old? I believe that was one of our test... Uh, test thingies? Yeah, yeah. You need to get that off of there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of thing that we all know. Yep. Somebody's sitting down there, you know, having a beer. That's real good information. <laughs> that's not good information. So we need, now that some of those things are public, we need to get them cleaned up because some of those things... They wind up showing up at the podium. We don't need them. Good point to that. When we do clean those up, we probably in the closure comment we probably ought to clarify that too of what that was and why. It yeah, good point. Was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever it's worth, I, I don't know that anybody else is here. I know Adam and when we when we reviewed the software for the website, this was one of the critical things that we looked at was in terms of whether it did or did not have these capabilities. At the time, I had no clue what this program was, but Dina and everybody else was excited about having the ability to report online, and in particular, to submit photos online in instantaneously. And I don't know, that was six, nine months ago. So here's the fruition of that whole thing. But we looked at this capability when we looked at that software. But, you know, from a you know, public perception standpoint also, you know, when Tony and his crew goes, goes out to fill a pothole, we'll be able to track how many complaints about potholes we've received and when they've been filled and the time to fill and all those types of things. So from an information gathering standpoint and being able to report on that type of information, moving forward, we're going to have a whole lot more information to, uh, especially even for Christy from a public information standpoint, to, uh, to be able to report back to the public. I'll load on that. the app tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're pointing this direction. <laughs> Flying's great. I just am amazed. And, I think uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, congratulations. Thank you. We really appreciate that. And that's, I'm looking forward to getting on to see if that street light got fixed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other thing is, if you put my address, I want to know what my wife's doing. Would you? <laughs> can't do that, huh? We can't, we can't flag a user if they're being particularly difficult. Okay. <laughs> uh, those maps, those aren't ours. Those are owned by Amazon, apparently, or Google Map or something like that. Is that their map? The, the aerial map. It, it, yeah, that you would click on to see what's so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. I don't know what we need to keep going forward and get. Well, I, I, I don't know what she wants to show with the website, but I've oh. used the website a couple of times, and from where we were at, I mean, it's, it's obviously oh, good. night and day. Other than your calendar's not, you're not correct on your calendar. I'm not correct on the calendar. Somewhere there's a city council calendar that's six months old. Maybe if you go to government or city council and then you go to city council calendar, that's way off. Yeah, we don't be accused of having secret meetings. Because it loads a PDF file. All right. Um, whichever one it is. I mean, that picture looks a whole lot better on screen than it does on that screen. It's a well, nice, that's we'll, a nice picture. We will get to the to that in just a second. But yes, so the website, I'm very excited. So we know we, we've been talking about this since the beginning of the year and just really making it so it's easy to use, you know, user friendly, people can find the information they want because that was a big problem before is just the ability to even find what people are looking for and you know, if people can't find it in one, two, three clicks, then they're out. Um, and so with our new set site, we now have the drop down menu. So right away, you get to see city departments, you get to see the plan. So it lists them out so you don't have to click in three or four times before you get there. Um, there's also the quick links here on the bottom. So people want to know how to get a permit, um, their water bill, sales tax. Um, so items that we felt that citizens wanted to go to immediately. So they wanted quick access and not have to go through that whole um, site up here where you know people may have a little bit more time to say, okay, I really want to find some information about you know the municipal court, but nothing directly um, because there is a, a pay, uh, how do I, which is an, a new item we didn't have before. So how do I submit a bid or how do I pay my 
bill or how do I contact city council? And so these are um, different areas. And then also some quick links because the museum and the library, of course, have their own website and link out and then also for people to contact the police department. Um, so like you said, for calendar, um, people have the ability to see whether they want a whole list of all the meetings or weekly, monthly. Um, the nice new thing about the calendar too is if you click um, a meeting, for example, tonight's government, you can go to more details. It tells you where, time, and you can also access the agenda. Um, right there. And so there's a lot of um, new functions that we didn't have before. Um, a couple of things I want to point out, which I think citizens will appreciate, besides the ability to report an issue, um, is that we have, um, people can stay connected, and so we have a notify me section. Um, and they can choose what they want to get email about. Um, so there is a whole list. We now can put emergency alerts up. So if there is like a water main break or if there's police activity and people need to stay out of the area, if there's some kind of emergency up here in this section and we don't have an emergency today, so it's not showing up, but a big red button will appear and it'll have that information. And people can choose to sign up for text alerts for those so they get immediate push to their phones. Um, with everything else, they can choose whether to, every time I post a bid, they'll get an immediate email saying that there's a bid put out. Um, also, those alerts, um, if there's any jobs, once jobs post, they can sign up for that. Um, anytime we have a news flash, anytime I post an agenda or a new meeting, if there's a change to the meeting, um, and anything's uploaded to the Agenda Center, and we can add more items to this as we, as we learn more about this website, so. Do you have any questions about? Well, if you put, I'm not a real computer literate, I'll need my 15-year-old son here. Anyway, so I put my email address in there, and I want in information on construction. I just click on that, and then, something comes through in a, in a construction type manner, I get an email or a, mm -hmm. an information on it? Yeah, click on all those and put his address in there for No, us. no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> I, I have I get a, a hundreds of those a day, so just don't call me on a car warranty. I'll kill you. Okay. So you can say what kind you want and then you can choose. You can choose I want. So I put my email address in and then I do want to get, you know, maybe I want bids, but I only want build bids from community development. And so, um, so now there's an, a green X on that. And maybe I want um, to know when seasonal jobs come up. And so you can choose everything that you want and how you want to receive that. It's like a normal notification. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so. Wow. Is it, is on. If you unselect it, it drops you off that list? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that it's all in one section. I think before we had the ability to assign it to pages. So if you wanted to find out about, um, about two A streets, I know we had it on there, or the news flash. If you wanted to know any time we did a news item, you could subscribe to that page. So if there was a, an update to that page, you would get a notification. But now it's like specific to these areas, which is um, much better. <laughs> so uh, being the naive, I want to call it naive or just dumb, one of the two. Okay. Don't laugh out there, Tony. Okay. Uh, All right, go ahead. So, if when I load on my phone, I'm getting a similar, uh, I'm going to call it Interface. appearance, mm -hmm. but do, do I also have, we, we talked about this months ago about a, a different app? I mean, is. Yes. So, if you go to the App Store, 
um, and then you go to Civic Plus and you download that app, um, you there is the Canyon City one and it does look different um, than what we have. I know they were putting that through to the app stores. I'm not sure if it's gone live yet um, because they there were some changes that I had to to the information that they put on there and what I felt would be better suited for citizens to see. Um, so some of them, I was like, they don't really need, this isn't as important as perhaps uh, maybe bids. So please add that instead. Um, but they will be able to, to see that. Once I know that that's up and running, then I can add that to the bottom of the, here like in the quick leaks at the bottom of the page. And I'll, I can add um, Canyon City app so people know they, they can download that. And when they search for Canyon City, mm -hmm. when they get Canyon to the app City. store? Canyon mm -hmm. City. Okay. What was Civic Bus? What does that mean? Civic the Plus is the company that put together this website. Program. We used to um, go with Revise, and now. So, so I go to the app store mm -hmm. and literally look for Canyon City? You would look for Civic Plus. Civic Bus, Plus. and then within that are we Canyon, Canyon City. City. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then once that is available, I'll push that information out so the public knows as well that this is new and they can. Yeah, when I look at Civic Plus, then I start seeing Civic Plus with different cities. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you just pick. It's plus, not bus. Plus. Plus. Oh, I thought I said bus. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm really good at this. Plus, P-L-U-S, plus. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you put Canyon City, does it come up? And you have to do it without the tilde Children. because, mm-hmm. Starts with a C. Really? I thought it was, <laughs> is that K? They weren't able to add that in, they said. No, it didn't seem like it wants to give me a Canyon City. But when I did Civic Plus, it just brought up all these different Civic Plus programs with different city names. Mm -hmm. It's not like I have the option to do a second. I mean, once I do Civic Plus, I'm just getting all these different apps. I don't see where I would put in Canyon City. That's okay. I mean, it's. Did you download it? And I think the the way to get there is different if you're on an iPhone or just a smartphone. Um, so I think on one, you have to do the Civic Plus app, download that, and then oh, look for Canyon City. I see. And then the other one, you look for Canyon City, Colorado, and then it'll come That's up with probably this, this way, mm -hmm. is, is that I'm, I'm going to select the city because there's like Baltimore to Maryland and Johnson, yes. Iowa, Snow Ridge. I mean, there's a ton of them. So okay. the app is um, has more of a purple screen with the same image background um, but then icon it's a purpled out and then icons that go to the different um, most of them are what we have down here um, on this and then on the side and then when you click in there then it takes you either to a page that's app only or to the website if there's a lot of information so I mean, you know, it brings us up to, brings us into the, whatever century we're in, 22nd century or whatever it is. I mean, are you pleased with what we've got versus what you thought we were gonna get? Yes, I'm very pleased. Uh, now it's just a matter of meeting with the different departments and making sure that the information we had, um, you know, like 300 pages of information right. just, and so they tailored that down, and so now it's making sure that the choices that they made uh, reflect what every department wants to have on there. And so there have been some things that they just pulled in where it's like, oh, that's outdated, and so we need to get rid of that. Um, 
And so well, like Glenda found a couple things right off the bat, like this isn't right and this goes here. And so just, uh, you know, I'll be now going in there and cleaning things up and just making sure that everything is where it needs to be and that everything's pertinent and up to date. And um, But I'm very excited about it. It's, it's a lot uh, easier for me to use and navigate. And part of the frustration before was when people would try to find something. If I can't find it, and I'm the one that uses the website every day all the time, then that's a problem. And so um, I'm thrilled. And you were supposed to go do some training in Utah or something like that, weren't you? Well, I, uh, I did. Uh, I went to a kind of a training meeting, all the different people that use Civic Plus, and here are some new um, things that are rolling out, uh, and met with a lot of people that used Civic Plus. And so that was a great thing, was just meeting all the different cities and the people who were like, there's, you know, customer service is hands down exceptional. And so anytime there's an issue, like there's a, something's not working with the website and we reach out to them, then we get an immediate response and they're, you know, trying to fix the problem. Um, so that was huge. People really seemed to really love it. And then we had virtual training um, two weeks ago. And so it was three days, and we had the projector up, and they went through all of these different, um, you know, here's how you add different departments, here's how you add the agendas. And so really training on that, which it was just really jam-packed for three days, and so still trying to be like, okay, well, how do we do that again? But that's a great thing. Um, if I have a question or an issue and I can't remember, there's a little help button on my end, and so I can click right. it, and I'll be like, "How do I add photos?" You know, and then it'll say, uh, "Photos for contact us." Photos for, it, and then it not only tells you how, but then you can go to a help link, and it gives you a video, and you know, so it points like, "Click here, click there." So it's very detailed, and so mm -hmm. I shouldn't even have to contact a person because it's laid out so easily that I should be able to get that just by the search, the help search, which is huge. And, and we're, we, we have a backup to you, do we not? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that when you're on vacation. Yes, so, <laughs> so a few different people attended. There's a few of us. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, just so that it's not 100% dependent on you so that you can have a life. <laughs> right. <laughs> they told me, you know. Uh, so uh, Elijah uh, can do a lot of this because he had done maintaining right. the website, so he has enough background information. And, and, um, and Cindy, of course, for agendas. And so, and then Ivy for HR stuff. And so we had people come that I felt like, oh, you might need to be able to put that information on. Um, but like I said, that help. So Cindy did have to put something on the agenda center, and I was gone, and she couldn't remember. She could click that help click link. She will oh, click that help button, yeah, and it'll have a detailed description on this is how you do it, a layout, so there's no, there shouldn't be any problem. Good. Um, okay. More? No? Any, uh, any further questions of the limited council or acting administrator? Anyone else? I mean, I've used a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, great. There's a city yeah. council calendar that loads yeah. as a PDF somewhere in there that's wrong. So if I find it, I'll send it to me so I can get that fixed. It's like mm -hmm. a second set of. Calendar. Is it an old, old dated? Well, I was there uh, today. I clicked on it and, and uh, it like brought up an April or September calendar <coughs> or something. I click on that city council. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. your calendar, the yeah. one that you make. And I bet we didn't mean it to go beyond there anymore. It's a little safe to find it and delete it. Okay. Yes, yeah, so and like I said, they pulled everything that they could. Oh, well, not everything. They condensed some of the pages, but the information they pulled on there. So some of those things, I'm like, oh, that's not quite. Okay, we're finding a few things that weren't supposed to go over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because they had a team working on it. So even though I had told you know the art director and maybe the other person, if they had someone else working on it that didn't get the memo saying, oh, don't put these items on here, it happens. 
but yeah, we will find that. Yeah, this one. Okay. Well, when Mr. Meisner and some of his meeting over there will conclude. <laughs> Why? You don't need me. No, what? But I really appreciate what you all done. Yes, thank I, you. I know. Thank you for spending your evening with us. It's impressive. And again, thanks again. I think this is great. The public's going to love it. Even us guys that have no idea what you did, but it looks great. <laughs> so again, thank you. And I think we're going to be adjourned. Okay. Good job. <laughs>